G'day. In today's video, I'm going to be upgrading the RAM in an old Intel Aspire 1. So an old little netbook. And what I'm hopefully going to be putting on here, or if it allows me to, is to upgrade the RAM. And then I'm going to be up installing Ubuntu, no not Ubuntu, an old 32-bit version of Linux Mint. And from there, there's a model number, ZG5. And hopefully, I'm just going to be re setting this up just to give away. And hopefully someone in my local community will be able to get a, a free computer that they should hopefully be able to just simply web browse on rather than this just becoming old e-waste. Which the battery life of it's not great. But if you've got nothing, this would be something at least. Looks like there's not many screws. I've got one, two, three, and the three at the back. I'll open this up and have a look. I'm suspecting a fan may be there. No, nothing. We had an optional M.2 by the looks of it, or M starter. Now, how does this break apart? Does the base come off or does the keyboard come off? I suspect the keyboard may also come out. Looking at this, which for the purpose of just upgrading the RAM, I might actually have to tear it down too far, if I'm lucky. Get the screen out of the way. Push the tab in, which is a forgotten thing on most laptops nowadays. Not quite. There we go. Ta-da, we find nothing of use. Laptop design definitely has come a long way since this particular one. I found that it's taken two steps forward, one step back, as now to get into the machine, there's usually just a, all the screws on the bottom and you take the bottom off and that gets you into the computer. With this design here, if you spilled liquid on your keyboard, you'll be able to take the keyboard out and from there, you'll be able to replace it. But if we wanted to replace the RAM or the hard drive, on this particular one, we have to disassemble the bit of the bottom, flip it over, disassemble a bit of the top, and then probably flip it over and then crack it open. There we go. We'll also remove, disconnect the keyboard just here. Flip the tab up, pull it back. Now. Let's get in and see what we can see. Hopefully a hard drive. <laughs> Look at that down there. We have soldered RAM. We have a one 2.5 inch hard drive here. Living right here. Which I'm not even gonna bother trying to get to. And I'm gonna be very, uh, I'm gonna probably leave it here as I highly suspect there's probably not gonna be soldered on RAM. Very well, maybe lucky. Actually, I might keep going to see. Because there is, it is a fairly chunky boy, so hopefully, underneath there, maybe, 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 a ram stick under there. Screws, I'm not even sure logically where they're actually going. Are they going into the hard drive? Where are they actually connecting to? Disconnect the screen. So we also have to undo some of the screen hinge here. That's surprising how there does seem to be RAM already soldered on here. Screw down the front here. Now what are we doing? Do seem to be lifting up. This has to come out as well, wherever this daughter board is. I've got screws going everywhere. Get this out of the way. 
free up the hard drive. Should be twisted, disconnect the speakers. Disconnect the tape, lift up, wiggle out. And what do we get here? Oh, we do have RAM. We have 512 of Samsung PC2 5300S. So granted, that is virtually useless. Check out this cooling system. Look at that, it's a blower fan. It's like an old blower graphics card. You go straight out the hole. Not really draw in from anywhere. I will be upgrading this to probably a two gig. Two gig stick as opposed to a 512. I'm assuming this is 512 and 512 on board, which will give us a collective total of one or one gig. Let's see if we can bump it up. So I got myself a single stick of one gig. As I do, I have read that there is a limitation on the Atom processor in here. They can't really process more than two gig of RAM. Being it's already got 512 on there, there's no point adding any more. Now let's figure out how this puzzle goes back together. I do believe I'm bound to leave a few screws out. There we go, connected. Connected. All right, let's start over here to the right, this daughter board. And work my way back around. Over there, let's put this here. These two dud little screws here. I don't know if that's to stop chassis flex or what it's got going on there, but let's reconnect the antennas. It's pretty chunky, chunky connectors these days. There we go. At least I'm used to mobile phones that are considerably smaller. For me, most of these screws are fairly similar. Right the front, got the arrow here. Right. Now, that in place, and the weird video cable here. I'm pretty sure I'm right to put the back back on. One, two, three, four. These loosely line them up, see what we get. Who was the fool that invented this? Nope. So it goes into there. That's closed. No, maybe they don't go in there. Nope. What a silly design. Ah, uh, whatever, you can pop out. Don't actually see what its purpose is. Right, 
Goodbye. There we go. <laughs> Problem solved. Unlucky for me, these screws don't really seem to be that magnetised. So they are being quite annoying. I'm sure he came from over here if I remember correctly. Keyboard to reconnect. Now all these little screws. And three across the front. So that's it up. Or potentially upgrade the RAM in your Acer, Acer Aspire 1 ZG5. All that power, I'm not sure what you're going to do with it. You might be able to play an MP3. <laughs> you might be able to look at a JPEG. Sounds frilly. Granted your $200 mobile phone will have a better screen and a considerably more powerful CPU. But this saves it from e-waste, so that's all the reason to do it. Catch you guys later. Bye.